to think that when we get to a certain place then we'll be happy when we have a certain thing then we'll be happy really it's about finding the happiness or the joy that you can find in what you already have hello welcome to the little things a series to help you notice and appreciate the little things and the little lessons we can take from week to week each episode i go through three little things from my week which may seem really small or silly and insignificant and you might think why does that matter but the point with this series is to encourage you to notice and appreciate the little things in your life because the little things really do make a big difference the first little thing that i've noticed over the last few weeks since the last episode the first little thing is enjoying where i'm at not getting caught up in the rush to be somewhere else to think that when a certain thing has changed then i'll be happier or then i'll have made it or then things will feel okay the arrival fallacy isn't it to think that when we get to a certain place then we'll be happy when we have a certain thing then we'll be happy but really it's about finding the happiness or the joy that you can find in what you already have and this is where gratitude comes in and, and why gratitude is so important and i do a daily gratitude list I'd encourage you to start gratitude journaling. Either you can pick one thing you're grateful for and write all about that thing. Maybe you're really grateful that it's spring now and you can write about the different colors that you see of all the flowers. You can write about how you saw a bumblebee on your walk. <laughs> like you could focus on one thing like that and just write about how grateful you are that it's spring. Or you could do a really simple gratitude list and just list everything you're grateful for. You could write it down. You could say it in your head. You could pray it and say, thank you God for this. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. Enjoying where I'm at. Gratitude is a massive part of that because when you're grateful for something or when I'm grateful for something, it means that I'm really present and paying attention to the things around me. If I'm not paying attention to them, I can't be grateful for them. I can't notice them. And just enjoying where I'm at instead of this rush. Because it's one thing to have like goals that you want to achieve and things that you're working on and you want to see results or you want to get better at something in your job like I've taken on a new role recently and I'm sort of like <laughs> this initial part I knew it would be difficult because it's something new but I was up for the challenge but I'm sort of now like okay can we fast forward a bit to the point where I know <laughs> what I'm doing and as difficult as it can be to be to stay in the moment and just appreciate you know this moment for what it is and this time for what it is and, and then that means appreciating the fact that I really don't know what I'm doing at the moment that's quite frustrating but just allowing myself to notice that not judge it just be like this is where we're at and there will be a point <laughs> in the future where I look back and I'm grateful for something about this time that I'm missing out now that I'm not I'm not focused on now because I'm too busy looking ahead and being like oh I wish I was somewhere else but there will be things now that I'm missing out that I'm not paying attention to so I'm really trying to hone in on what those things might be whether it's to do with your living situation or your money or the things that you have or the way that you look it's really easy to just like project all of this into the future and be like when I get this thing or when I have time or when I have more money, everything will be better. And it's like, we all do it. And it's just, I'm, I'm noticing that impulse more and more in myself, constantly just trying to bring myself back to the present and be like, look at this thing to be grateful for. Look at the, this lovely garden, look at the sunshine, right? Yes, maybe in my job, I will be looking back and being like, oh, I'm so glad I'm not there. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad I'm not a beginner anymore <laughs> trying to learn this stuff. And it's a very steep learning curve, but there will be things about this particular time this particular time of year that maybe I wouldn't be paying so much attention to if I hadn't caught myself doing this and if I hadn't been like no we're gonna <laughs> focus on trying to be in the moment and enjoy the moment and really because like I already do a gratitude list and I've done that for a few years now but really pay attention to that and hone in on it to make sure that I'm appreciating all that I can as opposed to just thinking about where I'm gonna be and there will be things even if you're in a really bad situation now, there will be things that you're taking for granted, even if they are just really little things in terms of maybe you have time to do something that in the future you're not gonna have time to do. Like you have time to read, for example, or I don't know, just pick like literally anything. Maybe you have, we're gonna talk about music a bit later on. Maybe you right now have a 
Apple Music or Spotify subscription and that's going to run out and then you're not going to have that anymore. Like sometimes when the circumstances are so bad, it has to be those really small things. So I can be grateful for the sunshine because it's spring now and going around and seeing all the flowers and a lot of the blossom, like the apple blossom or cherry blossom has sort of come and gone already. But I, I did appreciate that as it was happening. I don't want to be sort of looking back on things and being like, I wish I'd noticed that at the time. I've recently read, reread <laughs> Happier at Home by Gretchen Rubin. And she wrote the book, The Happiness Project, which is probably one of my favorite books. I read that quite a long time ago, <laughs> probably like 12 years ago, I read that book. In that she talks about how the days are long, but the years are short. And it's when she's on the bus going to school with her daughter that she realizes that the days are just going by and there will be a time where she's going to miss this time on the bus taking her daughter to school because that's not going to happen forever. And she's like, I don't want the time to just keep passing me by. I want to really be present and appreciate the stuff that I'm then going to look back on and be like wistful about or nostalgic for and think, oh, I wish I'd really like treasured those moments or paid attention and been fully present for those moments because I didn't realize how quickly they were going to go like we don't always want to be constantly on to the next thing and so I've really even though there are things difficult things you know unpleasant things to deal with at the moment I can still pick out things that I am really grateful for and I can enjoy each moment and find things to be grateful for in a situation that's still quite difficult. Enjoying where I'm at. The second little thing that I've noticed this week and that I've been appreciating, which I briefly mentioned before, is music. I have been loving the Peaceful Piano playlist on Spotify. I had to hide one of the songs from the playlist because it was a bit too emotional and it was making me cry every time it came on. <laughs> but otherwise, that playlist is so calming. I don't know if it's to do with like piano music or classical music in general just being good for your nervous system but every time I put it on it's sort of like a sigh of relief I like listening to music that has lyrics <laughs> I don't know I don't know how to describe it but you know Dua Lipa has a new album out I don't know if you can see it in the background <laughs> I've been listening to that a lot I've been listening to Sabrina Carpenter's new song I've got like a whole playlist that I sort of made like last month which is sort of my spring playlist which I've been really enjoying I love listening to those songs and like they make me feel happy for summer and really in the moment and I like dancing around my room and it's nice like it's it's good but there are some times where it's just better to have on something straightforward and calming like the peaceful piano playlist and so if your immediate reaction is like um no maybe don't judge it until you try it so just try and put on a couple of songs and just have them on in the background as you're like brushing your teeth or tidying up your room or doing some work or walking somewhere it may have a bigger impact on you than you would think particularly if you think it's not going to have any impact on you you may be disproportionately surprised at the impact that it has i like as well putting it on in the evening with the other thing that we're going to talk about lighting some candles it's creating this really nice atmosphere really like peaceful meditative meditative <laughs> which is a really nice atmosphere to have before you know, as you wind down before going to bed. I will leave a link to the playlist in the description because it does have some beautiful piano music on it. And as well, I guess on the same lines with music, it brings up like quite interesting feelings. Like I said, <laughs> I had to hide one song from the playlist because it was too emotional and it was making me cry. Um, I think we could also, at least I find it's helpful to be mindful of the songs that I'm listening to and the messages that are in those songs, just from a place of like, I listened to a few of, Taylor Swift's new songs on her new album and some of them I'm just like do I want to be singing this and like speaking it because a lot of them are written from her perspective right so you're saying if you were singing along you're saying I I this I think this this is my worldview and it's just we can sing along like automatically because you like the song but what are they saying and is that something that you want to be speaking into your life like I've just been mindful of the story that I'm telling myself particularly at work <laughs> we're gonna come back to that just because it's very easy to be like I can't do this or I, they think I'm not good enough and the more you say something like that the more it becomes true because at least I find then I start to act in ways that confirm that story even if I don't want to but if I'm telling myself the story of they think I'm incompetent they think I'm not good enough or I don't think I can do this if I'm telling myself that story I will suddenly find myself on calls instead of defending myself or like speaking up I will find myself sort of like going shutting down a bit and being like I don't know 
when I'm asked to direct a question, which I don't know if that's just like me being defeated and me being like, oh, I can't be bothered. But I think it is also to do with like the the way that I'm talking to myself and the way that I'm showing up at work. Like <laughs> it's the thing of your brain doesn't want to be wrong. You, your ego doesn't want you to be wrong. So it, if you're telling yourself the story of I'm not good enough or I can't do this, you're going to start acting in ways that align with that because you don't want to contradict yourself almost. So <laughs> when it comes to music, what lyrics are you singing to? What story is being told is it the story of I can't ever find anyone or I'm a bad friend or I'm the problem <laughs> right like that song is great the it's me hi I'm the problem is me there is some interesting like introspection in that song but whenever I have it on it, like a part of me feels uneasy I'm like yeah I can be the problem sometimes but it's not all me and it can come across quite self-pitying as well and maybe that's just <laughs> me reading too much into things but I think the fact that I'm even thinking about this and it keeps coming up for me I think that means that maybe it's not important to you and you're like who cares I'm just gonna sing to the songs I like but for me it's definitely something that I need to pay attention to because the other side of it if I'm at work and I'm thinking I'm competent I can do this like I'm learning I'm trying I may not be the best at this at the moment but I am showing up like I can do this eventually and I'm right now building the skills to be able to do this well and to be good at this if I'm telling myself that story then the same situation where before I said oh I don't know and I kind of just shut down on a call if I'm telling myself that story which has more self-belief in it then when I'm asked a question or when I feel like I need to speak up and defend myself I'm able to do that in a non-confrontational way but I'm just like hey like I am competent I can do this and I you know say respond to whatever in the situation as opposed to the other story I think it's just difficult at the moment I feel like I'm constantly having to work on my mindset before I go into work and I guess maybe that's inevitable but it feels like quite a lot of energy for me to put into just like emotionally readying myself for how the day's gonna go and on the one hand, I'm like, is that a bad thing? You know, is it a bad thing that I'm waking up early and trying to find some peace, like just wander around outside, have my piano playlist on, like we talked about? Is it a bad thing that I'm spending time, you know, creating this really serene attitude in the morning? Like no, that that in itself is lovely. But <laughs> on the other side of it, I'm like, the fact that I'm <laughs> having to prepare so much to face this work environment, I'm just a bit like, is that a sign that maybe, I don't know. I don't know. We shall see how it goes. The point being that a little thing I've been noticing is music and particularly piano music and just noticing the way that music affects my mood or affects the stories that I'm telling myself. Something to be mindful of and a little thing that maybe you can think about and apply for yourself as well. The next little thing that I have been noticing is also one I mentioned earlier in terms of having the peaceful piano playlist on and lighting candles. So I've got a sleep candle, which is a lovely mix of, let me look at it, <laughs> essential oils of lavender, chamomile and jasmine. One thing that I've been trying to do is to spend out and you can see this video is heavily influenced by Gretchen Rubin. I just said I'd read Happier at Home. She talks about this idea of spending out. So using what you have, don't save things for a special occasion. Like if you have a nice perfume, use it, like use it up. She mentions this in her book, The Happiness Project, but also Happier at Home. In Happier at Home, she specifically mentions candles and she talks about how you need to spend out because she had a particular scented candle that she kept saving for a special occasion and eventually it went bad like the oil separated and it was not usable <laughs> so it was just a waste along those lines I have these things and I'm like well yes they were quite pricey but I need to spend out and use them up in that book as well she talks about creating a shrine to scent and some of the things in her book are I don't know some of it sounds like quite pretentious or she has a funny way of expressing herself sometimes or maybe it's just the way things are being written but I do quite like this idea as well she has like all of these really unique fragrances from Demeter I don't know if it's still a thing I think this book came out maybe 10 years ago so who knows but just appreciating that little thing using different scents like I've got like different fragrance sprays different perfumes candles obviously <laughs> it's very easy to go overboard on this I did have like some reaction to some perfume I think it was the perfume I don't know 
I that's kind of why I've not filmed a video for a while. <laughs> My eyes went really I don't even know I don't know if it was eczema or what but I had this reaction to something and I think it was maybe the perfumes that I bought so that's not so great but <laughs> that's something to add like a little bit of luxury I'm not sure what the word would be I think I didn't pick a word for the year I talk about that in my January 1st is a Monday like the, the yearly reset video that I made about how you could pick an idea to prepare for the new year or like a resolution or instead of making resolutions you could pick like a phrase or a word to define your year and one of the ones I listed was decadence and I don't I didn't officially like pick that as my word for the year but I do quite like the idea of that putting something luxurious like a really nice candle or like wearing perfume every day and taking that into like your mundane everyday routines of things that are like boring or you're so used to doing them like just adding something a little bit extra and it can be a really powerful way to like set a certain ambiance like I have this candle I've had it going so it's all flat so it's not going to tunnel so I've had it going for the last hour and smells so nice in here like I feel quite sleepy <laughs> I think because I've got the pillow spray of the same scent basically and so I spray that right before I'm going to sleep and I got that for Christmas but because of that I've that has such a strong association with like sleeping that now this candle with the same scent is making me feel quite sleepy so if you can find something use something that you've already got like a fancy shower gel or like body lotion or body scrub that someone gave you use these things up and add a little bit of decadence uh, to your everyday. Thank you so much for watching. I will leave the little things playlist because as I said this is a series talking all about the little things. We go through three different things every week so I will leave that playlist if you want to see more of these videos and hear more about how the little things can change your life because the little things really do make a big difference. God bless, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one! <laughs>